Well, hi folks, this is Darren with My RV Works. I wanna welcome you to another session of 10 Minutes with the Tech. We just take a bunch of questions that folks have been asking and we try to compact them together. I'm in my side yard. I have no idea what this thing is, but I'm sure some of you do. And those are some of the questions that people will ask. They'll say like, well, how does this work? Or what does this do? Or what would you do in a situation like that? So if you guys know what this is, please let me know because it's a really cool tree or plant or whatever it is. It's just, it started blooming just the other day and I'm like, man, that's really cool. So if you like this kind of a content and we're learning about RVs together, just ring that bell, man. Every time we make these new videos, you're going to get a notification. Subscribe to our channel. You can support us on Patreon. There's so many things that we can do to help each other to make this content better. Um, so without any further ado, let's go head over to my shop and get on my little table and bench and just start working through some of these questions that people have. Thank you for watching. Okay, our next question is coming from a viewer in Port Orchard, which is not too far from where we're located. We just don't go that far anymore. We used to, but it's just too far out of our service area. I'll spend hours in the truck just driving all over the place. But he's in Port Orchard. I almost wasn't going to take this one because I don't have any props or anything, but let's just talk about it. He's having a blown fuse, okay? And after I read it a few times and I tried to dissect out, I asked myself, what would I do if I was there? And um, so, so let me just read you his question, okay? So he's got an RV, but it's got one of these in-command systems. And those are the ones that has the touch panel, the DC board, um, and then it's got a, a body control module, a BCM, okay? So the body control module is where he's having his issue. So if you don't have an RV that has this little touch screen and you can pair your phone to it, maybe this won't apply to you. And that was one of the reasons why I wasn't gonna dive into this question because I don't think many of our customers have that. It's kind of a newer system on the market uh, since 18 or so. Um, but it does involve electricity and it does involve some t troubleshooting type stuff. So here, here's Darren's take on what I would do if I was there, whether it's blowing the fuse, whether it's on the water pump or whatever. So here's some of the thoughts that I would go through, but here's, here's his question. Now his, uh, his handle is um, scoots13in, okay? I don't have a name, but I do have a location. So he's got a water pump in his RV and the water pump is controlled from his little touch panel. Okay, he turns on the water pump with his touch panel. That then communicates to the body control module, the BCM. The BCM um, is a, a module with a bunch of relays on it and uh, all the wires feed into it. So your touch panel can then control all the functions throughout your coach. You can read monitor levels and, and things like that. The fuse on the main panel is blowing. So where all the breakers are and all the fuses are listed up, apparently from what I understand, he's blowing that fuse. Every time he turns a water pump on, that fuse is blowing. And so um, he started the pump and he looked for any wiring. And um, I understand he may have even replaced the wire from the pump to the, the BCM, body control module. And, um, and he's also, uh, I'm just gonna jump ahead here. He, he's replaced the wire from the fuse panel to the body control module. And um, he's constantly blowing fuses, but when he connects a light to the end of the wire from the fuse panel with a light, that works. And um, so, so he's, he's done all this troubleshooting, but every time he connects the wire from the breaker panel, fuse, from the fuse panel to the body control module, from what I understand in his question, he's tripping, he's blowing that fuse. Okay, there's a couple things you could do, but um, the first thing I would reach for is my meter and I would use a continuity test. That's where your meter has those little beep, beep, beep things where it's got the Omega horseshoe thing on it. I'd put my meter in that mode and I would touch my leads together. I should grab my meter, but anyway, touch the two leads together. Your meter should beep, but it's not enough just to hear it beep. You need to look at the display and it should say OL for open loop, okay? Well, actually, when, you, when it's beeping, it should say zero. Zero meaning um, there's no resistance between these two points. It's effectively the same wire. Uh, OL is when you break it apart, meaning it's open, open, open loop. Think of a circuit as a loop. So the first thing I would test is that body control module, the BCM, those are numbered. You start up at the upper left-hand corner and it's like a horseshoe. It starts one, two, three, four, five, and then it goes on down the bottom and then it comes up the other side. So the water pump is on the bottom right quadrant area. It's in the 50s, uh, 55, 56. I don't know. I'm doing it from memory. But anyway, if you have one of these systems, you'll look at it. It'll be right there. It'll be the bottom right-hand corner. Um, factory spec is a blue wire, but they're rarely following factory spec. But I would take my meter and I would check a ground reference from the pin, the, the screw terminal, that that water pump connects to, to my ground wire, and see if it's shorted on the panel, 
Okay, so so that's that's something I would want you to check, because it seems to me that every time you're blowing a fuse, it's when that BCM module is in the equation. Okay, for fun, what you could try is you could run a wire from your fuse panel all the way over to your water pump to make sure that the water pump is in fact working, which you can't test because it keeps blowing the fuse. And when you took the wire off the BCM and you put a lamp on it and it worked, and then you put it back on the BCM and it blew the fuse, it's very possible your BCM has failed. Now those relays on there, can you can switch them around, so you might want to maybe try moving some relays around, maybe find an unused um, a channel and just try to move that around. Could it be the relay? Could it be the board? Now your best source for this is going to be the website um, incommand.net. So it's in, I-N, hyphen, command.net. Okay, in, hyphen, command.net. On there, they have your troubleshooting, they have toll-free numbers, those guys are great uh, in your support on that. So if there is a problem with that board, I would go straight to in command and ask them questions on it. But you can eliminate it being the board, or you can prove that it's a board by just doing a little bit more troubleshooting. It sounds like you've already done that. But uh, I think your go-no-go test is if you take that meter and you put it on the pin, I say the pin, the, the terminal that goes out to your water pump, and you reference that to ground and see if it's shorted on the board at that point. Okay, so thanks for your question. Hope that helps. Our next question is coming from Rick in Tennessee. So he basically has a 2015 refrigerator in a slide room. Now, apparently he just got this RV. It's new to him. And um, so he's got this refrigerator. The refrigerator's in a slide room, and it's not cooling. Apparently he's watched some of my videos, and um, he's felt the coils. He's felt the burner, and those are all getting warm. So apparently we have good circulation of that ammonia floating around inside of that system, changing states. There's two heat exchangers in or these absorption refrigerators, a liquid heat exchanger and a gas heat exchanger. And every time that ammonia changes states, it's either absorbing or giving off heat, okay? And, um, and that's how they work. And um, so he's replaced the cooling fans and the thermo switch. Okay, so on the back of his refrigerator, whenever you have a refrigerator in a slide room, you must, must, must have those little cooling fans. They usually come in sets of two um, to help move the air through. Air's lazy. It's not going to say, it's, it's, it's not going to go in there and, and, and do the work. You have to force, put the fans. And those fans are controlled by a thermostat on the fin up at the top on your condenser fin. Um, so the coils are hot, everything's hot. He's replaced his fans, he's replaced his thermostat that controls a fan, and he's repositioned his thermistor, but the refrigerator is still not getting cold. Um, I can think of two things off the top of my head. If I was there, the first thing I would look for, Rick, is um, uh, ventilation, okay? I have done a video where we talk about, I even drew a picture of a little grease board picture um, of the ventilation that as it goes through, um, and then we did another refrigerator uh, where we actually installed the baffling in the back. So what you didn't mention in your question or in your statement was if the baffling is there. If you have that open vent up on the top and you can take that vent off and you can see inside, there's your problem. The problem is that right there. You've got to bring the air on the bottom. You want less than a one inch gap between the back of the coils of your cooling unit and the back wall of your refrigerator, less than a one inch, zero is fine, but less than one inch, zero on the sides, and you wanna force that air through a baffle through the top condenser fin. If it's open void right there, and that air is just dumping out, and your condenser fins are up here, and the air is just dumping out, it's, there's your problem. You fix that problem right there that we'll be talking about in those other videos, and your refrigerator will start to work again for you. Um, if that refrigerator cannot shed its heat, it will never perform by being cold on the inside. It's all about the ventilation on that. On our website, we also have quite a few refrigerator manuals. And what I like to point people to is go to their manual and in those installation manuals, well, in the service manuals, they're gonna, they're gonna have a section on installing them. And just make sure that your refrigerator is installed correctly. Just because you bought an RV does not mean that it was made right. And um, no disrespect to any of the manufacturers out there, but I cannot tell you how many service calls I've been on, on even brand new RVs and the baffling was not put in place according to the manufacturer of the refrigerator, okay? Norcold and Dometic have standards with which that baffling should be done. So I don't care whose manufacturer you have, the manufacturer of the RV did not make the refrigerator. The manufacturer of the refrigerator, refrigerator, is the one that says we want it this way. So just because you have a brand new RV, and, and we even did a really high-end 
$120,000 fifth wheel, new. And um, the baffling wasn't correct on that one. In fact, the video that we made was also a DRV, very high-end RV. The baffling was not set correct on it as well. So um, check that out, see if that doesn't help you, okay? But good luck and thanks for watching. Well, folks, that's all the time I have right now for answering questions. If this added value to you and it was helpful, please give us a thumb up. It's just a little thing you could do. Subscribe to our channel, ring that bell, and uh, or click the bell icon. That way, when new videos come out, you'll be notified. And um, you can support us on Patreon, on our website. We have links where you can check out our, our store merchandise. We make some tools now. I'm making tools for you guys now. That's kind of a fun little venture we've started. And um, we've also got some Amazon links on our store as well. So if you need a tool or something, you're, you know, show some love. That would be kind of fun. So from all of us at Marby Works, we really appreciate you. It's a privilege. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>